Hello, my name is Abby. Today I have my book review for you guys of the amazing book Cinder by Marissa Meyer. This book. Okay, let me just lay this down for you guys really fast to let you know that I was not planning on filming today at all. I pretty much had my filming schedule set out this week and I was going to be filming in the next couple days or so when I was off from work. And then I finished this book today and, and knew that if I didn't film this book review for you guys, it would never happen because I am for sure starting Scarlet tonight, which is the sequel to Cinder, which means that I needed to get this review out and done and filmed tonight. That way I wouldn't forget anything or start to get the books mixed together and not have and not know exactly what to talk about for this book in the future. But first off, can I just say that I am so mad that I just now found out about the series. I've had these books on my shelf for months now and had no idea what treasures I had sitting on my shelf. I finished this book in two days, guys. I picked this book up yesterday and I finished it this morning. It is so good. Almost 400 pages of just solid, amazing writing. And we're going to talk about it. All right, so in case you are like me and just have not given this book a shot, I am going to briefly talk about what this book was about and then we will get into the spoiler section. But first, I am just going to do this little like non-spoiler because this book has been out for a while, so I'm sure a lot of you already know a lot about this book, but just in case you don't, we're going to get into that really fast. I knew going in that this was a fairy tale retelling, but it definitely is just a very loose interpretation of Cinderella. So this book is all about a 16 year old girl named Cinder who is a cyborg which means that she is half human half mechanic you know like she has a um, she has a metal foot a metal hand and then a bunch of her rewiring inside of her body are is all machinery and she is pretty much the Cinderella in this world we have the stepsisters one whom she loves one whom she tolerates and then we have her stepmother who obviously does not care for for Cinder at all. This is definitely a fantasy world. Pretty much what is going on in this world is that there is a there's an epidemic going around in this world. It is the plague as they call it and it is a very very serious disease where the moment that you see these bluish purpley bruises or spots show up on your skin you are taken to quarantine pretty much to be sentenced to death. You have to be taken out of um, the public of the public place and you never get to see your friends and family again because you can't risk spreading this disease. And we find out later in the story that one of Cinder's stepsisters, Peony, who is one of the ones who is the stepsister that she that Cinder actually likes, unlike Pearl, who's the other one, he contracts the disease. And her stepmother thinks that, you know, it is Cinder's fault that Penny even got the disease because they were out together when she developed it. And so Cinder is sent to a research facility. There was a law-ish type thing that was made where cyborgs are able to volunteer to donate their lives for testing. Like they pretty much get to be the guinea pigs for the possible antidotes to this disease. And when Peony contracts the disease, the stepmother signs away Cinder's life to become one of these test subjects and that is when the entire book just completely takes off. But one of the things about Cinder is that she is an amazing mechanic and that so she, the way that her family makes money is that Cinder goes to this marketplace every single day and is known as like the new Beijing, the best mechanic there is in new Beijing. And so she is in there and she winds up meeting Prince Kai who is the prince on you know who he's like next to be crowned emperor he's the next highest high up there and he comes to cinder to have one of his androids fixed in this world you know people aren't technically like the slaves or the servants androids machinery that is who you know takes care of the humans while cyborgs are kind of in this 
are kind of in between. They're not quite human, but they're not quite androids. So they're kind of caught, so they're kind of treated with like disdain, but still are able to live in the world, if that makes sense. So she meets Prince Kai through that, and that is when the whole Cinderella story starts to unfold. And there's even more craziness in this that you meet so many people in this. Marissa Meyer's writing is just so ingenious. She had me hooked from the first chapter. This was not a hard book for me to get into. I did not struggle getting through any parts. I flew through this book and I'm basically just waiting for this video to be over so I can go ahead and start the second one. So I'm so excited. Like I just knew I had to film this video just so I could start the next book. That's how excited I am about this series. So that is all that I have to say about the non-spoiler section. I don't want to spoil anyone so if you guys have not read this book, I highly suggest shut off this video, go read this, and then come back and let's talk about it. So if you do not want to be spoiled for Cinder, The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer, then go. Goodbye, I'll see you later, thanks for hanging out with us, but go read this book right now. Okay? You gone? Awesome. All right, let's start the spoiler section. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so let's go ahead and get kind of like the tw the plot twist out of the way. Let's talk about that for a minute. So let's talk about the fact that Cinder is really Princess Celine. Now, I saw this coming simply, I think, because I kind of know how YAs work now. I kind of like, we know the formula for a lot of these books. So I definitely was like, okay, if she's not Princess Celine, then she at least knows who Princess Celine is. You know, like she, there was no point that they would keep talking about her so much and have, Prin and have Prince Kai be so fixated on this mythical princess if she wasn't really alive. So I think we all knew, I would think from the beginning that that they were both going to be intertwined somehow. And we were right, yes, um, we find out near the end of the book that Cinder is in fact Princess Celine. So now that we have that out of the way, let's also talk about the fact that I love Prince Kai and Cinder so much. I found, okay, I think that Marissa Meyer wrote Cinder's personality so well. I think it was very interesting to see how people consider cyborgs as, you know, even though they have personality chips like how androids do, they act like Cinder doesn't have feelings. So even though like her tear ducts were taken out and she can't blush, you can tell that Cinder feels so much, maybe almost even more than the actual humans do. And the idea and the fact that Marissa wrote her as this selfless, you know, person that's just trying to take care of this family that she really didn't even want to be a part of to begin with, you know, the husband adopted her into this and yet she had no say in the matter. The fact that she thinks that she's not even worthy of Prince Kai's time, let alone his affections, just that entire situation just had my heart from the very beginning. I really, really liked them a lot. I liked the depth of emotion between Cinder and Peony like I think that her, when her death scene was so real the imagery in this book is amazing I feel like there were some scenes that I was instantly just transported into those moments and then the queen I think her name is like Levanna I want to say Queen Levanna she was terrifying like the fact just the descriptions of her and the powers that these lunar people have over humans is absolutely terrifying Whenever you could tell that Cinder was thinking about trying to tell Prince Kai that she really is a cyborg and not human, and then at the very end when he finally finds out, your heart just breaks, and then when he, like, says to her that, when he says to her that, like, you know, he can't even look, he can't even look at her more than he can look at the queen, my heart broke. Oh, just every single moment with the two of them was so special and I really hope that we get to see you know some type of redemption with them especially now that she's Princess Celine now that we know that she is who the prince was looking for all of this time and I mean I 
I mean, I have a feeling that their story will probably get pushed back a little bit considering we have a war we're going to have to deal with most likely between the Earth and the Lunar people, but I still hope that we get to see some type of closure with them and that in the upcoming books. I, I think the fact that just the doctor kind of knew everything from the very beginning and yet he hid so much from Cinder was crazy to me. Like he could have told her all, like that she was Princess Celine from the very beginning and I feel like we could have saved so much time because I feel like she could have just gone straight to Prince Kai and been like I'm who you're looking for. Ta-da! Let's, you know, end this together. Let's bring, let's fight on Queen Lavanna together. Let's fight on my aunt. Let's get my kingdom back and then they can get married and make everything okay again. Like that's what needs to happen. This book has my heart and I'm so sad that it took me this long to start reading it, but I'm so excited to pick up Scarlet. Oh, and can we talk about Iko? I think that's how you say her name. The, the, android that is pretty much kind of like Cinder's only friend and the fact that the stepmother took her apart but oh uh, like I quickly like fell in love with Aiko's character and I really hope that Cinder that we get to see Aiko come back because Cinder now has Aiko's personality chip and Peony's ID chip so I'm really hoping to see Aiko come back in another book hopefully she gets to put her back together I hope that's a thing that actually happens it might not be, but I really hope so because I really loved her as a character. I thought that she was great and really, really interesting and I really actually want to learn more about Aiko as a character as well, even though she might always just remain kind of like a side character to Cinder. That is okay. I still want to learn more about her though. But yes, I'm really, really excited right now about this book as you guys can probably tell and I'm gonna end this here. I, that's all I really want to say right now about this book just because I'm so excited about it and I don't want this video to be too too long because I've already been talking for about 30 minutes now. Yikes. So I'm gonna end this here and leave, just leave me some comments down below about what some of your favorite scenes were, which ones that you really liked so maybe we can get some discussion going and because I really like talking to you guys about your favorite scenes but if we can try to keep the spoilers in this comment section to a minute Minimum, maybe put like spoiler alert you know if you're gonna spoil that way people that haven't read this won't be spoiled I would appreciate that and I'm sure everyone that hasn't read these would appreciate it as well but yeah I hope that you guys enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you did I make videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday and yes thank you again so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video goodbye